Make It Happen is a small glimpse into my reality of being a young female entrepreneur. I'm going to be sharing all sorts of tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 10 years. I'm going to be showcasing amazing businesses in the area, as well as touring homes, highlighting things of Oklahoma, and helping others learn how to be successful and don't give up on yourself. My goal is for everyone who's watching this to help them make it happen in their life. I'm sitting now in Huckleberry Hill Barn, and this vision was birthed from my engagement about 12 years ago. I had looked everywhere for a place like this and never came across it. A couple of years later, after I had told my parents that I was wanting to find a white wedding barn, I had already gotten married, but we decided we wanted to find some land and build the barn that I had always dreamed of. After many years, we found 20 acres in Purcell, Oklahoma, and we built this beautiful post and beam barn, and we have had so much fun watching all of the events come in, birthday parties, weddings. It's still a labor of love. We have a long way to go, but it's been so fun to just see this vision that happened 12 years ago actually come to life. And as a younger girl, the one thing we always dream about is our wedding. So to have two parents that Back up, building a wedding venue is the coolest thing I think I've ever experienced. Not everything is glamorous. It, we actually had a really difficult time opening. Um, we dealt with some family health issues, so the barn went on hold and we watched it kind of rot away for a while and that was very disheartening. Um, but then my husband and I decided, okay, you know what, let's just pull it together, put more money into it and finish it out. So. We ended up completing the barn, and as soon as it was ready for the opening, uh, COVID hit, and it was the month where the entire world shut down, so now we had this beautiful venue that just sat there where no one would come because everybody was staying away from anyone. So we sat and sat and sat, and finally, my brother ended up getting engaged, and he was our first wedding. And it was amazing because then we could get some pictures and videos and promote it. And here we are a handful of years later and we have been able to host about 60 weddings. One challenge of owning the wedding venue is honestly trying to stay on the same page as your family members who are also 50% owners. I absolutely love my family, but we definitely see um, different visions for how things should run. So sometimes it's a little more challenging when I don't want a policy to be implemented, but they are gung-ho about a policy being implemented. And so it takes, um, you have to really swallow your pride at times to just let things go and just see how it pans out. And sometimes it works out. Sometimes you can say, I told you so, and then you can change the policy. But there's a lot going on at all times. You're dealing with brides, you're dealing with brides' families, you're dealing with their friends, you're dealing with, I'm dealing with family here that we're trying to run it. I absolutely love going to weddings. So the idea of owning a wedding venue has been so fun for me because I get to peek in and, you know, walk around, see what's going on, have a little cake if they let me. But uh, there are definitely a lot of challenges. People get really high stress on their wedding day. So the smallest issue can just explode somebody. And I think that's one of the, that's one of the moments where I'm like, okay, okay, dad, I think I'm gonna step out and you, you can take it from here. And so it's kind of nice to be able to have my parents, um, they live on the property. So it's nice for them to be able to kind of run the show while I'm off doing something else. My biggest tips and tricks for running a wedding venue is let them know that there will be something that does go wrong. It doesn't matter how well planned out you have your wedding. There is somebody's going to forget the ice or somebody's going to be late or you may have lost a button. So I try to keep people very calm on their wedding day because I have seen a lot of people cry and it's amazing to watch them be so stressed out to where I'm like, okay, listen, it's go time and then all of a sudden they just put on a different face and they knock it out and at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, they're extremely happy. But that's my biggest tip is be very transparent. Let people know things may go wrong and it's okay. There's enough people to fix the problem.
When we had the idea of building the venue, we really wanted somewhere unincorporated so we could do what we wished and we wouldn't be shut down because weddings like to go all night. So if you're building in town, you're going to have people saying, okay, it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the quiet ordinance is here. So being out on property has been one of our biggest visions because now people can go until later in the hour and you know, you can be loud out here and, and not too many people are gonna care. If you're gonna start your own wedding venue, you want to offer as many incentives as possible. That's the number one thing brides ask for when they come in, they're like, what do you have for me? So we provide all the tables, the chairs, we have linens, we have decor. One of the coolest things is after weddings, a lot of people don't wanna deal with taking home um, any of the stuff they brought, so they'll just donate it to the venue. That's phenomenal. But providing value and not just a space is really, really important because that is the first question that pops up. What can you do for me at this price? One other thing that is very important is do not put the pressure on the bridal party or you know birthday party or what have you um, to clean the venue after. So we tell them, please leave it at, you know, in a condition as you received, but nine times out of 10, people are not going to clean it the way you want it. So we have a deposit that's set aside to take care of the cleaning, the deep cleaning after the party is gone, because when we expected them to clean, they never got their deposit back because they just didn't clean well. I'm here at the Chickasha Festival of Lights. It's on 43 acres and has been established 30 years ago and every year they are adding more and more amenities. It is a family tradition that I come out here and share this with my children. You can drive through the park, you can walk through the park. There is a bridge that so many have gotten engaged on that has 75,000 lights. There's an ice skating rink, a carousel, there's food trucks, you could spend hours here. If you are like me and you absolutely love the holiday season, this is one of the top 10 light attractions in the entire nation, which puts Oklahoma on the map. We've got 43 acres to cover, so let's go check it out. You wanna go on this with me? Okay. Thank you. All right, to the carousel, because I'm not doing the Ferris wheel. We've got four tickets. Thank you. Thank you. What do you want to get on any of them? Yeah, you can get on You want to ride on this one? I'll sit next to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's freezing. These are freezing. They're like... <laughs> Woo! Why, Daddy? Why are you standing that? Because he's too big for it. Stay on. <laughs> Y'all, those were freezing. They were cold and like, I was worried it was gonna snap. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, you ready? Okay. Thank you. Why did this, why did this oh, it's so Drake. Come here, Chef. Chefy. One, two, cheese. Hi, can we get a pretzel with cheese? What do you want? Pretzel with cheese. Two pretzels with cheese. And a water. Two waters. Do you want a water? Yeah. And two waters. Two waters? We had such a fun time. Thank you so much for taking this tour with us and hopefully we'll see you next year. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs>